Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we have three mystery PCs. That's right. Three vintage computers that were pulled from e-waste. When I say e-waste, it's essentially where computers go to die, <laughs> or electronics or things like that. And in this particular case, I'm really excited because any opportunity I see that I have a beige case or something that looks like these, I would say I grab them if I can get them or accept donations and things like that. But I'm telling you, this was a great find, a great haul to see these. So I have not done anything with these at all. I have literally taken them and plopped them on the bench, all the dust bunnies included. So we're going to explore these together. We have three what looks like mid towers uh, of the time. I, I have no idea what's in them. Again, as I noted, I have no idea if they even turn on the power on or work. Today's video is going to be strictly just focused on reviewing each and every one of these individually to find out exactly what is in these systems. So let's not wait any longer. Let's dig right into it. And we're back with system number one, uh, mid tower mystery PC number one. So let's just do a quick overview of what we see in front of us now before we start opening up the inside. So we have a 52 speed LG, it looks like a CD rewritable drive, uh, 32, sorry, 52, 32, 52. We have another LG matching brand, which is always nice, 52 speed CD-ROM drive here, uh, floppy drive, which would have came in handy when I was working on the other video. We have a sticker that says Athlon, AMD Athlon XP. So I'm going to assume that that's the processor that's in this computer, but I've learned quite a bit of, uh, over the years and don't trust that. And um, in terms of the uh, buttons on the front, we have our power button. We have a reset button. Uh, looks like we have some indicators here, uh, one for the hard drive activity, and I believe for the power. We have what looks like would be for firewire uh, punch outs, including some uh, good old bugs that are sitting inside there. Uh, we have some USB front I.O. and we have what looks like uh, spots for sound. Now, one's punched out, one's not. Um, I don't know how frequently this was used. And of course, the front uh, cover, uh, the latch that was supposed to be on here is not there anymore. Let's flip it around the back and see what is there. So oh, everybody's moving. So on the back, we have our power supply, which is uh, uh, fairly fairly standard. Uh, we'll have to go into that and see what the wattage is. And then we have an ATX board by the looks of things. So we have our IO in the back, our IO panel, and yeah, lots and lots of nice little mosquito. I don't know from what year he was. So we have our PS2 ports. We have, it looks like ethernet as well as USB. We have our serial port, uh, our parallel port, our video out port, game port, as well as our audio built onto the board by the looks of things. And then we also have what looks like another Ethernet card here as well. So uh, again, not knowing exactly what's in here. Now we have quite the interesting setup here. We have a flathead screw, to, <laughs> screw in here. So let's just go ahead and get that out of here and see if we can get into the case as well. And so, I mean, ultimately, you know, you probably be asking yourself, I mean, some, some people who watch these videos go, you know, what, what are you ever going to do with these? Uh, and others go, oh, can't wait, dig right in. So oh, I like to clean them all up, get them all functioning, get them all working, and and get one of those systems working from that time. Now, you know, it, it's just nice to be able to go in and restore uh, these systems. So again, just uh, really cool to see. Okay, we're getting a first look together in this. I've not done anything with this at all. All right, so this computer actually looks to be complete which is really, 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 really nice. So I just want to make sure I get some lighting here adjusted just so everybody can uh, see inside the system here. Uh, if I can get this working, it'll be all set. I'll turn it down one level so the camera can focus in on it. All right. So in the system here, we have what looks like we have our power supply. So it is indicating that it is a 350 watt power supply. We have our two drives, which are IDE. We also have a floppy drive, which is your standard floppy connector, and it is connected to the board. Uh, so, is our, so are our ID ports. And this looks like it has dual hard drive in here. We have a Maxter hard drive that is... I'm just trying to see the model information in here. Um, yeah, I, I'm get, yeah, it's a 20 gigabyte hard drive that's in the top, and I have no idea what's in the bottom there just yet. And then in the system itself, 
interestingly enough, the ATX power supply is disconnected there. And so I'm not sure um, what the reasoning is behind it, why that is, uh, why that is uh, like that. So again, it could be for safety reasons. So again, older systems have the, you know, sometimes have the chance of capacitors blowing when you fire them up, things like that. So I will be taking a look uh, in the power supply just to see if there's anything obvious. Um, then this hasn't been powered up in many years, so I'm not worried about any of the voltages inside the caps uh, being dangerous to me. Uh, however, I am going to still take a look just because I really want to see. Now, the CPU uh, fan that's connected to the motherboard uh, is, is the wires are all separated on it. And it seems to be bent on the board. So I'm not sure why uh, that would be. But um, uh, but again, just I guess something we'll look into as well. Uh, we have our front I.O. panel, which I mistakenly thought was not being used. So my, uh, actually, that might just be for the power indicators and what have you. I'm not sure if the USB ports are connected via that or not. I'll have to um, take a look. Okay, so we have that and we're trying to figure out why, why that is the way it is. So, um, all right. So what we're gonna do is, is uh, just take out the RAM here real quickly, just to see what kind of memory is in here. And uh, maybe give us some more hints about what the motherboard is, as well as the processor. So the memory we have here is 256 megs of DDR400 uh, memory. So it's DDR400 and yeah, it says PC266 DDR. So we have two sticks here of 256 megabytes. So it has 512 megabytes of RAM. So we'll just pop that aside for now. And in terms of the motherboard, I'm not seeing a marking on the motherboard, which usually denotes what the motherboard is. So I'm just taking a look here to see. And if I can see anything on the board that would indicate uh, what it could be. And I'm not seeing anything on here. Sorry. So um, again, we'll uh, just take this off here. This uh, let's get the screwdriver in there. Uh, for the uh, I just want to see what the the processor is on the board, and let's see if I can get that off gracefully, and we'll be all set. Let's get a different screwdriver here. There. Okay. So I just found a smaller screwdriver, and I also uh, adjusted the light. Uh, the light I have is uh, able to be mounted on top of the metal there. So I'm just shining light down inside the case. So hopefully that uh, makes everyone see them, see a little better. All right. Yeah. Well, that's thermal grease is definitely uh, worse for wear. Let's take a look here. So, I mean, I mean, ideally, I mean, the fan feels like it has the AMD uh, holographic image on the front of it here and it does freely spin, which is good news. Uh, again, the, the inside of it is quite dirty, but that's to be expected of the age of this age. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take that out there as well. Just uh, didn't even clue to me until right now to do that. So, all right, I am seeing that, geez, other than the fact of it really being really, 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 really small, um, it is, yeah, Athlon XP 2400. So, I mean, we know what it is. I mean, I had said it earlier, but again, just uh, good to uh, good to know. So I'll pop that back in there. All right, so we have our computer is an Athlon XP 2400. We have a modem, or sorry, an ethernet card that's plugged in here. Uh, it looks like it has Wake on LAN as well. We have 512 megabytes of memory. And yeah, I mean, we have all that um, plugged in. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go any further in terms of taking this out. I think what we can do is fire this up and find out if it actually does anything and do the good old smoke test. Um, I'm not seeing any issues with the capacitors that are on the board. Um, just to give any high level indication that there would be a problem on upon first startup. Uh, the coin cells right there. That's interesting the way it's uh, the way it's in there. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and get this uh, put back on, and there'll be just enough thermal grease for, I mean, you're not really supposed to do that. You're supposed to reapply and all that good stuff, but uh, there's enough there that's crusty and left that uh, we'll uh, be able to get it for the short period of time that we're going to have this PC on, just because I almost want to see what it is, see if it fires up, see if, you know, see if we have to 
you know, kind of schedule in any sort of troubleshooting that we're going to have to do with this, uh, with the system. Okay. We have that going and we have our memory. We're going to pop in here and you know me, I like to use the oxit and all that good stuff in here, but for the sake of getting this system all fired back up, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll just see what, uh, what it does here. All right. So let's go ahead and get the bench set up with a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and we'll do the old smoke test and find out how this will work. Okay. So I have the computer all ready to go here. I'll, I have the keyboard and mouse and uh, power all hooked up. Now on the back of the system, the ATX power supply, there is a switch. I have the main power bar on, so I'm just going to flick the switch now to see if anything happens. This fan in the back did come on. Okay, I just realized I did not plug in that that uh, CPU fan. There. Okay. All right. So let's flip it back on. Nothing yet. All right. Let's go ahead and power it up. I am not getting, oh, that was very interesting. So the power came on, nothing fired up. And then all of a sudden it came on in, in meaning that the hard drives, for example, didn't spin up. It's not very happy. Definitely complaining about something. All right, let's just turn that off here. And I'm just going to pop two, one of the sticks of RAM out, just so we're only dealing with one. I'm not smelling any burning, which is good. Let's just leave one stick and see what happens. Okay, the same thing's happening there. Actually, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to spray the socket there just to have some in there. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to un uh, disconnect this network card. I mean, extra... Part of troubleshooting is the less you have plugged in, the better. And then you can kind of narrow down what what's going on here. See, I don't like how that motherboard doesn't have those two screws in the bottom. You can see how it's just flexing in the back. There. All right. So I pulled that network card out, which is uh, just says a DFE, so D-Link uh, 538TX is the uh, is the network card. Oh, so it's written right in the back too. All right. Anyway, we have that out. Let's pop this on again. So get some life out of it. Yeah, it's doing the same uh, same idea here. So either it's not liking the RAM or there's something else going on here. My, my gut feeling is the RAM just because of the noise that it's giving where it's not posting. But it does have a audio, audio, you can hear the beep. So uh, let's just see here. Ah, posted. There it is there. Look at that. We have our main processor here. Let's get you zoomed in there so everybody can take a peek with me here. And no smoke. <laughs> um, all right. We have an AMD Athlon XP2400 memory testing. There's 32, two gig, 32 megs of shared memory. So it's testing the 256 uh, megabytes, which is great. I'm just going to go ahead and set up real quickly just to see what uh, the system has here. Um, okay, so the monitor likes to adjust. All right, so standard CMOS. So we have a primary master, um, and so it's our two hard drives here. It uh, looks like a 40 gig and a 20 gig based on the models here. I'm not familiar with this brand or what that one is. Uh, we have our two CD-ROM drives, which are LG drives. We have our floppy drive, which is wonderful. 
640K memory, uh, and then we have our base memory. So, and remember, this computer was an e-waste. It was literally sent to the junkyard. So the fact that we can do this and have uh, have a working system after doing this is pretty pretty darn cool. Health status, oh, here we go. So it shows all the voltages that we have within the system. And the current temperature is showing 32 degrees Celsius, which is healthy, and our system temp of 21. And then our it also has the fan monitoring. So, I mean, <laughs> zero healthy thermal grease on this thing right at the moment, and it's cooling just fine. And so I have both fans putting you know, a pile of air. So that's really, really, really good. Let's just exit without saving for now and see if it actually boots into an operating system or if we can see anything on the computer. I love that healthy beep. Let's go skip the memory test. Boot from CD, no. What's it doing? When is XP? Oh, look at that, from 2002. That's, uh, yeah, putting us at 21 years old for the operating system. It's booting up. All right, so we have my business, whoever that is, and we'll just click on that, jump into the computer. And of course, we'll uh, jump out of anything that's personal. Still loading. With the desktop, good old bliss. I don't have any speakers hooked up, so we don't get to hear the beautiful... Windows XP startup sound. So, I mean, it is a business PC. We have very basic stuff on here. We have Microsoft Office 2003, Word 2003, Avast free antivirus is installed. Um, I don't have a working start menu yet. And how goodness knows how long it's been since this computer uh, was even turned on. So, I mean, obviously they had a problem with it and it just wasn't booting anymore. And you saw what I did was I, I sprayed some deoxid in the um, in the uh, contact cleaner is what I have here, but it's the equivalent. And and what it does is it goes on, and I mean, it could have been a bad stick of memory, or it could be that the contacts uh, were just really dirty inside there. And it was giving the RAM error. Usually that's a RAM or a video error. Um, but, uh, but yeah, where it wouldn't even, even post, um, it just led me to believe it was that. I mean, you can always try on these boards that have the built-in uh, video card. You can try an external video card uh, and pop it in. But uh, again, anyway. Uh, okay, so we have what looks like a working uh, operating system. Let's go to my computer real quickly and just see if there's anything in the CD-ROM drives that we have. I uh, know they look to be empty. Uh, I'm not going to go into the business documents or anything like that. I have no interest in looking at the stuff, and especially where I'm recording. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we have, we have a working operating system here. iCatch, uh, IP, the PC camera, uh, SQL servers installed on here. So again, this, they were doing some database work on here as well. WinRAR, QuickTime, uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, looks like full 2003 suite. Um, you could get a license from this as well. I wouldn't want to uh, let that go. We have all of our games, our typical, uh, our typical uh, Windows XP games. And then all of our accessories and uh, all that great stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we have a working computer here, everyone, <laughs> from 2002, by the looks of things, running an AMD Athlon XP2400 CPU. And this is a great candidate for an upgraded video card, for, um, for going in and doing a complete cleanup on this PC. Even the plastic isn't yellowed, which is very common in these systems to have the yellowing plastic. So it's great to see that. And the case is in decent shape. It doesn't have a lot of dings or scratches. I mean, a little bit of paint peeling, but that's not a big deal. And if I can't get the stick of RAM working, the one that was bad, or at least tested bad, uh, yeah, I mean, what we'll do is we'll just, I have a whole box of RAM. We'll just pop more RAM in here. And it accepts three slots, or sorry, only two. I apologize, so only two. So, uh, no, I, yeah, two. So, I mean, we'll try to max, 512 megs, uh, 512 megs of RAM is great. Uh, one gig of RAM for Windows XP has always been my, I found a sweet spot for the system. So again, if I have the memory, I'll definitely pop it in the system. But yeah, all right. So here we are. We have our mystery computer from eWaste number one that on camera, we were very quickly able to get working. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited that we were able to do that. So let's go ahead and pop into system number two. Okay, so we have mystery system number two here on the bench. And I just left everything on the desk here because I know that we're gonna be 
hopefully uh, attempting to get this working as well just temporarily okay so uh yeah so it's a it's a case <laughs> uh with some blue on it and obviously this beige here is nowhere near the same color as the side of the paint so in my and there's quite a bit of uh spots where sun wasn't exactly touching you can see what the original color was so this is definitely yellowed and definitely a candidate for retro brighting um, and if you don't know what retro brighting is i mean you can google it but uh, it's the enthusiast term that we use to where we use the peroxide we can use cream you can use different things like this and what happens is that you Put this all in the plastic. You, I mean, you take it all apart. You put it in the plastic, and then you cover up. Uh, you cover it up in um, like plastic wrap, and then you put it out in the sun, and it actually turns this uh, to a much lighter shade of of um, beige, similar to what you know hair does as well uh, when you're bleaching hair. So um, yeah. Anyway, so here we are, and so let's just kind of go over the case and uh, find out what it looks like or what could be in here. So we have the LG. Uh, it looks like a DVD multi recorder as well. Um, so that's pretty, pretty handy. Um, unpopulated base. We have, uh, uh, you know, it's probably just a floppy drive in behind here. Uh, well, I say that, but I don't see a floppy drive in there. <laughs> and this case was rattling quite a bit, so I have no idea what's inside there. And then there we go. You can see the bottom where this was probably left up like this, and people would access the front I.O. And then so the sun didn't hit that part. So that's where the original is supposed to be this case, and then you have the bottom. So it does have a sticker saying AMD Athlon 64. So that gives us a little bit of a hint of what's in this system. So two for two for Athlons, um, assuming that that's what's in the system. Let's just turn it around the side here, on the back, I should say. I'm trying to make sure not, oh, that power supply is just some dirty. All right, so we have, <laughs> we have a network card, or at least what looks like a network card, that, I, I mean, I gotta look inside here. I, it looks like the the back shield is not on it, but anyway, I'll understand more when I look into it. Um, and then over here we have a regular ATX, uh, so it's an ATX system. And then we have our, our uh, PS2 ports, serial port. Uh, it looks like a spot in the breakout for a firewire, um, different types of firewire. We have SP out. Uh, we have our Ethernet card, our Ethernet port, and we also have four USB printer printer as well. And our audio out and then we have one punched out as well for you know how you have different like three and one or sorry five and one seven one systems a uh, sound system so um it looks like it's popped out but nothing populated and uh it looks like this side does not have any screws in it so we'll go ahead and open that up uh you know again uh, it's going to void the warranty if i do this but uh, i'll accept the risks all right let's go ahead and just pop this off and again we're seeing this the first time together and hopefully nothing jumps out at me and bites me. All right. Oh, no. This is definitely, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is not showing the same amount of love as the other system did. That's for sure. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pop this uh, in here as well so we get some lighting. And then see if, uh, well, there's no hard drives in here anyway. But let's see if I can get a better angle here for everybody to uh, see. Right, let's just pop this up here in the middle towards the top of the case. There we go. Hopefully that gives a bit of a little light for everybody. So first off, I notice there's no hard drive in here. So I mean, that's not a huge deal other than the fact that we will not be getting this going today. Um, this is our caddy. I'm just gonna be careful it doesn't attack all the wires with our floppy disk. So remember how I mentioned that I couldn't see the floppy disconnected. So this would go like this in here. And once it was in there, then that is what, uh, there we go. Just gonna get it lined up. Yeah, so I mean, that would just slide in there and then that would be what you, you use. I really like these IDE cables, not gonna lie. Um, I mean, they're all different type of cable, but uh, just for cable management, uh, very, very thin uh, round cable. So let's pop that in there for now. And our power, and then so that CPU is definitely loose on the board. And then we have a floating video card in here. Just Kind of hanging out let's pop that out here and this is a burnt <laughs> uh quite oh my goodness oh yeah like that's i can't even turn that that fan like, look at that i mean that's that's <laughs> I got a good good view of it here there's burn marks on the fan bearing itself um the the fan is just caked with stuff 
And uh, it'd be a shame if anything happened to the car. What kind of car is this? Uh, it is a Radeon 9600 Pro Advantage, 128 megabyte video card. I mean, I'll see what I can do to, you know, take this off and, and try to restore and do some testing on the, on, on this video card. But I mean, again, just a shame that, uh, I mean, again, this could have been this problem with the system, the video card died because, you know, it's so important to blow out the stuff in your, in your system to, um, uh, to, you know, clean it out, get all the dust away. You know, you don't need any of that in there. All right. So anyway, that video card was just randomly floating in there and we have what looks like to be additional IDE cables that are here. Uh, nothing fancy. You've seen one, you've seen them all. And our front IO is connected to the front. So that was functional. All of our, uh, well, I say all. No, they're still connected. So our front lights, uh, a reset button, all those things are all, all connected, which is great. And the last thing, oh my goodness. I have no idea if the CPU is damaged or not. It's it's quite uh, just floating here. Okay, well, okay. So that gives me a little... Oh, yeah, okay. So let's just get this out first, and I'll talk. I just can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So we have our, we have our um, fan here, AMB branded. I mean, it is literally just cake. There's a blanket of dust inside this fan. So, I mean, at the very least, I mean... It just needs to be completely gutted out. I mean, it, it, it feels like it flows just fine. Like the bearing feels good there and there's nothing touching. But uh, yeah, just it really needs some TLC. And this is, this is, what a shame. Okay. And there's our processor. So socket 754. Let's pop that out and find out what this is. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get a wipe here and do some cleanup. I have some just ethanol wipes. Just to clean up some of this old caked on uh, stuff or thermal grease. Uh, no bent pins at all, which is beautiful. I hope there's no damage to the processor. My hesitation earlier was because the the bracket where the heat sink sits on uh, the the computer is out from the motherboard. Like it's literally come like there's a, there's a spot for it to go into the motherboard and it's just completely out of the of the pcb so i need to go like i i would have to take this out and just really give it a good scrub find out exactly what's going on here and try to reseat that before even try attempting to use this uh it's an msi motherboard it seems to be quite a large motherboard actually now that i'm looking at it it says k8t neo MS6702 version 1. So I mean, if anyone wants to look that up for me and uh, leave a comment down below and let me know a motherboard. Was this a gaming motherboard at the time? Was this considered what that would be? Um, again, I'd have to do a lot more research on that. So, okay. So it's an AMD Athlon 64 processor for sure from 2001 uh, is a date code that's written on it. And I'm just trying to loosen up that grease. There we go. And the model is Athlon 64 3000. Yeah, I mean, here it is in the flesh. So it seems to be okay uh, again. Uh, but again, I, I want to do, again, a lot of TLC to this computer. I want to take it all apart. It, I, I feel like it's salvageable. What I'll do is I'll take it out of the case and uh, pop a good uh, working memory in it, good, uh, get the CPU all situated away. And see what we can do to uh, see, like like a workbench almost, like a like a test bench, and just really see if we can get that going, uh, just to test out all the components before actually trying to put all the work into getting the case going or getting it working in the case. And I'm just hoping there's absolutely no damage to any of the um, any of the traces that are here. I, th th there's dust just caked on the board, um, and that's probably a direct result of the blanket of of uh, dirt that's inside inside this heat sink and fan. All right, what do we have for memory here? Let's just pop that out. So we have we have three slots on this motherboard uh, that it will accept. My guess is DDR as well. Uh, so 256, 256 megabytes of DDR, 266 memory. That's in this computer, and, and I bet you the other side is similar or the, uh, the same. And to give us 512, uh, not giving me any information on here, but my gut feeling is it'd be another 256. So yeah, anyway, 
We have two memory sticks that are in here. I'm just going to pop them back in again until we're ready to take it out complete of the system. So again, you, I mean, you probably guessed it already just by, you know, the, I'm, I mean, I could power it up to make sure the power supply doesn't blow. Um, I don't want to try that video card. Yeah. I, I think for what this needs, I mean, I can pop a video card in there. It's just, I'm really worried about this this bracket here because this will make zero contact let alone the fact that this is disgusting and won't work properly it won't cool properly even for a test but i mean literally that's it won't even make any contact to that cpu and my fear is that that was like that for a while and it's very possible the cpu has been burnt out I'm not sure um but again what we can do is we can do another video on this particular computer we can do a complete strip down of the system and uh, and go from there all right so we have you know the chipset uh, looks just fine. We have the, I mean, that's a decent size motherboard that's in this computer. You can probably see it on camera there. So, I mean, we have five ex PCI expansions. We have our AGP slot. We have our, our three memory expansions. We have ATX power supply, and then we have our, our IDE and we have a coin cell as well, which is standard of the time, which is wonderful as opposed to the barrel batteries that leak and eat motherboards for fun. Then we have our MSI marking on a silk screen as well as the model number, which I read off earlier. So awesome. So uh, again, I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, power the system up just because of that processor situation. Um, and it needs a processor to be able to boot into the BIOS. So I'm going to leave this alone for now, but we have a good understanding that we feel that it's salvageable. Hopefully I can get this card working in that video that we focus in on this. Um, again, I'm going to take it off of the, I'm going to take that, yeah, you can squeeze those together. So I'll take that heat sink and fan off of there and see if I can jury rig something. Um, but yeah, it's definitely burnt. So, I mean, it just, it's just seized. That's not going anywhere. All right, I can go on forever about this, but let's go ahead and jump into number three. All right, so we have mystery system number three. I feel like there should be like cool music that plays there or something when I say that, but anyway, that's fine. Uh, maybe somebody can send me something I can use royalty free. So here's the computer uh, number three. I mean, this is, I love this case. Personally, I, I think it's a really cool looking case uh, with the design of this case. Now, I'm not cool with the cool yellow tinge that's on here. Um, it, that's not natural. That's not even intentionally done. This has clearly been sitting in the sun in an awkward way that is a line that goes diagonally like this across here and then fades down here to the side here. So this is just, that's the portion that was in the sun. The rest did not see sun for so I have no idea if the computer was sitting like on a desk under something. No idea. But uh, but yeah, and, and it's interesting though, because like this feels very weird. Um, and I have no idea. Oh, okay, so that's okay. All right. So it's just a cover for I was originally touching this and just playing around with it. I was like, that that can't be the CD ROM drive, you know, when I first got it. And I flipped this down just now in front of everybody. And it looks like an LG 52 speed CD ROM drive. LG is our favorite today. Every one of our drives have been LG. So uh, there we go. LG, uh, you want to sponsor the video? I'm totally cool with that. All right. So on the front, we have, again, I just like this case. Uh, and this case has a lot of things rattling around inside as well. So hopefully it's, uh, we'll see if it's in decent shape to be able to do anything with. So we have our, uh, what looks like vents on the front. Again, I just like the look of it. We have our power uh atx power i imagine uh, we have our reset our indicator lights our floppy drive which uh, i think it's in there <laughs> well now it didn't eat my finger so that's good all right we have our usb um it says usb in the front here so it's just one of those push in and out levers and they pull it out and then it just shows two usb front io as well as microphone and headphones all right so we have the back of the system here um I should be checking the wattage before plugging them in because sometimes these switches can go from 110 volt over. That's what we require here in Canada, but you can switch it over to the other voltage. And, you know, again, I should have checked that because these can get bumped when they're being moved around. So we have our, what looks like again, our ATX IO. Uh, it says mid tower case manufactured date code of April 1st. So April Fool's Day, which we just passed. Just had its anniversary, its birthday. Happy birthday, Case. Um, so 2004, uh, it just talks about the voltage, the hertz, and the amps, and whoever was required to fill all that stuff out. Um, so we have our I.O. here. I mean, it's pretty standard I.O. I'm not going to go hash it over again. Now, the interesting thing is I have these two 
cables just sticking out of the back here. Literally, like that. Like, like look. Two audio cables. Why? Like, is that something I'm not knowing? Am I going to, you know, something going to break inside when I open this up? But anyway, uh, let's find out. Let's get our screwdriver out because the screws are actually in this one. So, yay, this computer comes with bonus screws. Uh, for the record, I have piles of these, but uh, always good to have them. I still have no idea what that is. It's going to be a mystery until we open it up. All right, you know what? I'm not even going to open it on camera. I'm just going to do this first. And I'm going to put this aside and we'll open it together. Oh, everything's falling on me. All right, so let's turn this around. Uh, <laughs> All right, wonderful. All right, so we have a random heatsink Intel this time, and no processor that's in this case. Uh, let's go ahead and get that tight. All right, let's do the same thing here. Let's pop this up in the middle, just so everyone can see the inside of this case a little better, including myself. Oh, well, it's not really gonna go far there, unfortunately. So let's see if I can pop it in the back of the cd -ROM. All right, there we go. Look, there's this. A little light anyway. Hopefully that's not too bad. Uh, and it's probably screwing around with the camera exposure. Oh, I don't need to put that through the front of the LCD. Okay, so we have our, well, an Intel heatsink cooler. Yep, so it's, yeah, there we go. MPGA 47.8B uh, is what it is. So yeah, so there we go. We have our, um, what looks like our processor, which is not even in there anymore. So, I mean, that's, that's not there anymore. So we can't really, Test that. I'm just going to disconnect the. Jeez, oh, I can't. I don't want that just hanging there. I'm just going to see if I get the snips there because I, I just want to get that out of the system because I heard some banging around in there and I don't want it to do any damage to the board. I'm just going to snip this off like this without cutting any of the wires. There we go. Let's use my side cutters and we'll pop that off. There we go. There, we have that out at least. And uh, just uh, again, just good to have the heatsink and fan over there. Okay, so we have an A bit motherboard. Let's see if I have a model on this. I'm just looking for it. Um, no, I'm not seeing a model on it, of course. It just says, oh, yeah, here we go SG71. So we have an A bit SG71. So that, that'll give me a hint of what was in here in terms of processor. So we have an Intel, our first Intel computer. The other two were the uh, AMD processors that were in there. So there's not much to show in here outside of it. It doesn't have any memory in it. Uh, so the memory was stripped out of it, the processor was stripped out of it, and the motherboard and the computer were all put to pasture. Uh, actually, <laughs> um, that these cables, these audio cables, I forgot about them until just now. I don't know how I did that, uh, are attached to the front I.O. Um, that's interesting. So uh, I imagine they plug into the back of uh, like an extension off of the of the audio card or the built-in audio on the motherboard. Uh, I'm not seeing any bad caps on this motherboard either. Uh, nothing leaking. Uh, again, I'm not going to power it up. We don't have a processor for this. I do have a box of processors. I'll have to go through and see if I have the right one for this board, but I will make that part of a, a video specifically trying to restore this. And this is one of my favorite cases of the three that we've seen. I love all three. I mean, I think it's great uh, having these vintage PCs, but um, yeah, I mean, this is dirty as sin and <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it needs some TLC for sure. But yeah, that's uh, system number three. Again, I can't power it up. I wish I could, but, uh, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll stop, we'll stop with this one now and, uh, and go from there. And there we go. We have our three non-mysterious PCs now that we have a rough idea of what is inside them. And I know when we first started, we had, you know, three computers, which we had no, no idea about, and we were able to go through each one of them individually. Really cool. We were able to get this one all fired up and working. Uh, it seems to be in the best shape of all of them anyway, but uh, outside of the stick of memory that I couldn't get going. But again, it could have been the slot and Deoxy could have needed some time to uh, work and all that good stuff. Number two, again, um, needs some retro brighting. And this is the one that has the seized video card that was in it that we saw earlier and uh, some other things. So again, and, and not having a processor. So the processor's in there, but having that heatsink not make any contact with that processor, I, I'm not comfortable 
uh, firing this up just yet till I get that uh, all sorted out. So I will spend time on this PC on another video where we just focus on this, take the motherboard out, make it a test bench and go from there. And we have number three, door number three, <laughs> which is, uh, again, one of my favorite cool cases as well. I've never seen anything like that. It, it does have a Celeron sticker in the front of it. So I imagine that's what the processor that was in it. But again, I can look that up. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't have a processor, it doesn't have memory. I have tons of memory and I'm pretty confident that I have a processor for this. So I will go ahead and see if we can get that going because it does have a hard drive. This one didn't have a hard drive, but this one did, uh, the last one we just looked at. So it'll be really cool to see if we get that fired up and what, see, what, uh, see what goodies lie ahead of us. So here we are. Uh, we're at the end of the video. I really enjoyed taking the time, spending this with everybody, going through this. Love bringing retro content to everybody. If you like this type of stuff, you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. I try to reply to everybody. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I know that, uh, you know, everyone's viewing it, enjoying the channel. Please subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out. And hit the notification button above. And you'll be notified the minute I release a video, which I'm doing, you know, two, uh, one to three times a week is what, my, what I'm averaging right now uh, when I have time. So, again, just if you can subscribe, it'd be really appreciated. And uh, again, like I said, leave a comment below. Feedback is amazing. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos, things like that. And I'll see what I can do to accommodate. And uh, but for now, I thank everybody for spending time with me tonight. And uh, I hope everybody has a great week. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.